the hit HBO original series Game of Thrones is based upon the series of books A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. Admittedly, I have never read the books, but I have seen the show, and my knowledge of symbolism and the occult makes it easy for me to pick up on certain things within the show that other people may overlook. Although George R. R. Martin is a creative genius in his own right, he has taken some inspiration from the real world to place in his fantasy setting. And nowhere is this more obvious than in the religions in the world that he has created. For those who have not seen the show and want to at some future point, there will be spoilers. So you'll want to tune out now and go no further in this video. The gods of Westeros are many. There's old gods, new gods, red god, blue god. Well, maybe not a blue god, but there certainly are a lot of deities within the series. And the various religions play a significant role within the story. It would seem that George R. R. Martin has created a whole host of pantheons from scratch. But this is not the case. Instead, George R. R. Martin has adopted real-world religions and tweaked them to his liking. In this video, we're going to be going over some of the religions in Game of Thrones and comparing them to their real-world counterparts. And we'll start with the Old Gods. The Old Gods in Game of Thrones are primarily worshipped and prayed to at sacred trees known as weirwood trees large strange trees with a whitish bark and reddish leaves with creepy old faces carved into them. The show really doesn't go into the old gods all that much. I'm sure the books have more detail, but from what was shown I gather that this is a very nature-based religion, very akin to paganism. Even the ancient race known as the children who first worshipped the old gods are very plant-like in their appearance. And that's what I'm reminded of any time that I see the old gods on the show, is paganism, nature-based religion. I get the sense that the old gods are not gods that are out there, but more like the spirit in the tree. That's why there's a creepy face carved into it. But the old gods have shown to have some abilities within the show, most notably granting the character Bran the ability of clairvoyance the ability to have visions and see the past and future when he makes contact with the weirwood trees. Next we have the Lord of Light, also known as the Red God. This is one of the more mysterious deities in the show, and arguably the most powerful. The Lord of Light's real-world counterpart, religion, is Christianity. The sigil of the Lord of Light is the Flaming Heart. And when the character Stannis Baratheon wanted to revamp his own sigil, he took his existing stag head sigil and superimposed it on the flaming heart of the Lord of Light to create his new sigil as a depiction that he is a follower of the Lord of Light. And we see this flaming heart elsewhere in the real world on portraits of Christ. It's known as the Sacred Heart. The Lord of Light also has the ability to resurrect characters from the dead, which in Christianity is the entire foundation of the religion, that Christ was raised from the dead, resurrected. But George R. R. Martin didn't stop there. He also delved into Christianity's ugly past when it was known to burn heretics alive at the stake. And this is what makes the Lord of Light such a confusing deity because you don't really know if he's good or evil. He can raise your favorite character from the dead one moment and then have his followers burn children alive the next. And this is the brilliance of George R. R. Martin as he took the entire religion of Christianity, which is a religion on duality, where everything not good must be the devil, and he rolled it all up into one religion, into the same God. The Red Priestess Melisandre has even said there are only two gods, a god of light and a god of darkness. Well, the Lord of Light is both. It is both Christianity and Satanism. 
as described in that belief system. The Lord of Light is both God and the devil. And that was the interesting twist that George R.R. R. Martin had given its real-world counterpart of Christianity. Next, we have the many-faced God, which is served by the faceless men in the House of Black and White, which resides in the city of Bravos. When you look at the House of Black and White, what do you see? You see one black door and one white door. This is a depiction of the two pillars on the Tree of Life, Yakin and Boaz. One of the few faceless men that we get to see in the show is named Jachin Hagar. It's almost as if his name was inspired by the Pillar of Mercy. When we first meet his character, he is shown mercy by the character Arya Stark, who in turn wants her to come to Bravos to train with him. The many-faced god in the House of Black and White are based upon Hermeticism and the Mystery Religions. The first hermetic principle is the principle of mentalism, which simply states that all is mind, that we are actually in the mind of God, which is referred to as the all. And in ceremonial magic, when we use various God names, we're referring to the same God, but just varying on different relationship aspects to it. Just as you can be someone's brother, you can also be someone's husband, you could be someone's father, etc. This is why there are so many God names for the same deity. Just as the other gods within the show, Game of Thrones, is said to be all the faces of the many-faced God. They're all one and the same. Now where George R.R. R. Martin tweaked it a bit was instead of it being the all... The many-faced god is supposed to be death, as the faceless men are actually a group of stealthy hired assassins in the story. And many a professional mage may be. <laughs> Don't count it out. But George R.R. R. Martin took an existing real-world religion and twisted it for his own narrative aims. We're really only shown two faceless men in the show, one being a woman, Jack and Hagar and the Waif. Where Jachin represents the pillar of mercy, the waif represents the pillar of severity. And she was relentlessly going after Arya Stark and took great pleasure in beating her in her training. She primarily wore dark clothes, where Jachin primarily wore light-colored robes. So you can see the duality between the two. Even when Jachin agreed to allow the waif to kill Arya Stark, he seemed very reluctant to do so and said that he did not want her to suffer. In his off time as an assassin, Jockin is seen assisting others with suicide, out of mercy, and then he cuts their face off. One of the major things one has to do in order to become a faceless man in Game of Thrones is lose the sense of identity and become no one. And this is a reflection of what we do in hermetic magic in our efforts to strip away the ego, depolarize ourselves, and become the highest version of ourselves that we can possibly be. So for anyone having trouble following the whole many-faced God, House of Black and White storyline with Arya Stark going through all this, perhaps it will make much more sense to you now. And finally, we have the new gods, which are known as the Seven. Except there's nothing new about the new gods. The new gods' real-world counterpart are the old gods, which are the seven traditional planets of astrology. The Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Now, George R. R. Martin obviously gave the seven different names, but their correspondences to the seven traditional planets of astrology are very similar for the most part. There's the warrior, Mars, the maiden, Venus, the mother, Moon, the father, Jupiter, the stranger, Saturn, etc. All of which are still as relevant today as they were in the days of old. Planetary magic is based upon these seven traditional planets and is a large part of ceremonial magic and the occult. 
my course, The Seven Planetary Powers, A Guide in Planetary Magic, goes over each of them in detail and how to use them to achieve your goals. Link in the video and in the description for those wanting to learn more about The Seven Planetary Powers. Game of Thrones is a hit series for many reasons. One being that it uses real world components that people identify with even on a subconscious level. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Take care. If you enjoyed this video, here's another Mystery School lesson you may have missed. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe for more weekly content to help expand your knowledge. Thanks for all the love and support, and I'll see you next time. Take care.